Hey y'all, it's Betsy with Happily Ever After Etc. And welcome back to another embroidery project. So today I'm going to be starting the intermediate, slightly beginner level uh, embroidery kit that I picked up from Michaels. It is a loops and thread kit. Um, when I tried searching for loops and thread, I didn't find a lot of information, but it does say leisure arts on the uh, copyright portion of the fabric where it has the printed design. So I do believe this is a leisure arts kit. I don't know if they're rebranding or if they purchase loops and thread. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. If you're looking for the designs though, those are the terms I would search for. If you caught my last video, I am a brand new embroiderer. I've only done two small projects, smaller kits from leisure arts that I really enjoyed. And so I picked up this larger kit to A, practice some new stitches. It had a few that I haven't tried yet. And B, it looked like a really good um, base to try some other stitches that I've seen on YouTube that I'd really like to experiment with. So we are going to pop right into this. I'm going to show you everything that comes with the kit, the other things that I just have in my own kit that make it work. I'll walk you through the whole process and then we'll get started on the stitching. If you're looking for a no talking, uh, time lapse of a stitch completion. As the dogs are saying, my puppy's screaming. Uh, this is probably not that video. I am still learning and all I want to do is share with you how the kit is working and what I'm learning as I go because I have found those kind of videos very helpful when I did my first project and I haven't found anything on this larger project when I started getting into the kit and I started getting more and more confused and having to work things out, I realized this would be a good one to video because if I'm confused, there's probably other people confused out there. So let's get started. Let's get right into it and start stitching. All right, y'all. So let's go ahead and get right into this project. I'm really excited to get the base done so that I can add those extra stitches. Got my little needle catcher keeper so that's always the first thing I do for a new project always this is my third embroidery piece um, if you caught my first video where I showed you these little kits that I found that I've been learning with this is my first like more intermediate larger project and it's still pretty small but it has way more colors of floss than the original pieces that I did um, and so I would definitely call this more of an intermediate project than a beginner project Either way, I'm really excited to get started because I am basically going to be using a lot of these flowers as a base for some stitches that I've seen online that I really want to try. So we are going to get started with some of these satin stitches. I think that will be kind of the perfect starting point. So we're going to use this light sea foam and it says to use satin stitch for those with six strands. And the light sea foam is this color. So I actually prefer working with three strands to six strands. Maybe I will work my way up to that, but I have learned my own limitations is that I don't have a lot of wrist or finger strength. Um, and that six strands is hard for me to pull through the fabric. Maybe that's the type of fabric that they have in these. Maybe eventually I will find a better fabric that I like better. Don't know, haven't tried anything but these kits. So there you go. Now there are a lot of ways to uh, load your thread into your piece. You can leave a tail and anchor it into your piece. I've done that on sewing projects. Um, you can simply leave a knot on the back of your piece, but I don't, a lot of people don't like that because you want your piece to be as flat as possible. If you have a lot of knots on the back, it's not as flat. What have I done here already? Two seconds in. I'm an excellent embroiderer. There we go. What the instructions for the kit say is to go through a piece three to four inches away, and then come up in the part of your piece that you're working on. You can definitely do that. I like to go through the side about three to four inches away, go through the front, anchor your knot, 
I find that this for me works better than the front because it's more out of the way. So now satin stitch, let's see, is it going straight up and down? It is. So it looks like, I'm looking at these three, we're going to go a little, all different directions. So this first one we're going to do up and down. And I always try to go right over the edge of the guideline. That way it covers it completely. And you can see through the fabric just a little bit, I've laid that thread through my piece and it'll get tacked down. So now satin stitch, we're just gonna go straight across. We're going to do this for every single one of these following the color guides. So these first three are going to be this light color, then this one, this one, this one, and this one, and then we'll do the other side. A lot of this video is going to just be fun time lapse, but I know when I started doing these projects, I really found these kind of videos very valuable as a beginner, but a lot of them just showed individual stitches. Like this is how you do a satin stitch, not necessarily this is how you do this project. Or if it did show the whole project, there wasn't a lot of talking, which is very, Relaxing, that's the word I'm going for. But it's not always as helpful for teaching. So I'm sure I will do some videos at some point once I know more about with less talking. But I really just kind of want to show y'all what I'm learning. And hopefully if you want to do this same project, you are learning as well and this is helpful. But essentially, we're going to go ahead, we're going to fill in this whole piece, covering up these guidelines. And then once we've done all of these little pieces, we'll move on and do another part of the design. See y'all in a bit. All right, it is many nights later, because I only work on this a little at a time. We've done all our satin stitch for these. We have started working on the is it couching stitch. Yeah, couching stitch for the lighter strings up through here, up through our leaf. We're doing these little leaves, which are back stitch and straight stitch, and our uh, daisy chain stitch, of course. Lazy Daisy, is that what it's called? Lazy Daisy for all these little flowers and the loops on our leaves. So I have left a few of each of these to show you the stitches, and then I will get back. We've got the big flowers still to do. We've got all of our loopy flowers to do all these fun intricate stitches for the yellow flower and the more purple flowers here. And then once we have the whole base done, I will start adding the hollyhocks and other stitches that I'd like to do on these leaves. So as you can see, I have done these two leaves and I've left this little guy free and clear for y'all to watch. So these leaves, are uh, a combination of back stitch and straight stitch. They're very easy. They are not quite as intricate as even satin leaves or anything, but they have four colors. So we start with our darkest green, which is this. Let's get it to focus. Dark green at the bottom. Then we have one medium green, one lighter green, and our neon green at the top. You can see that I have all three, four threads ready to go that I've left on from our other two leaves. So we're gonna start at the bottom with our darkest green. And for this, 
but we are going to come up starting on the left and we're going to back stitch all the way around this bottom outline. So for a back stitch, we'll come up. We will go back down. And then we will continue to come up one stitch length away. all my threads over here on the left but that still doesn't stop me from tangling things because I'm that good oh the sun just left I need a hoop holder for this I don't worry about it when I'm sitting working at night but for these videos it would be helpful to keep it in one steady place if I end up doing a lot of these embroidery videos I will probably get something there we go. So we're going to go ahead and back stitch all the way to here. Trying to keep our stitches all about the same length and distance and size harder on camera. Once we are done with our back stitch, which this will be the last stitch in this color, we'll come in and do our straight stitch. Straight stitch is much easier because we are simply going to go from one side straight across the entire line to the other. And that is how we are going to do all of these middle lines. simply continue with this leaf doing the middle green light middle green and the neon green at the top and that's the same stitch for all of the leaves we will simply adapt it for some of these smaller leaves All right, so now moving on, let's work on our lazy daisy stitches. So these are the loops that make up all of these little flowers. They are also the same loops we'll use for some of these uh, green foliage kind of ferny leaves. So to start, we are going to come up through the very back middle portion of our flower. Now these two larger flowers, there we go, are going to be two-toned. So we're using a light purple thread and a dark purple thread. It's the same stitch you can see right here as the smaller white and blue flowers. We're just using two different colors of thread. So I'm going to come 
got my little silicone grip. Sometimes those help and sometimes you still need the pliers. This is a six strand stitch, so it doesn't always pull as well through this fabric. The better your fabric, the better your needles are, the easier these things pull. So I am working with a bit of thread left over and I want to use this for these last two flowers. So instead of anchoring it all the way on the edge, I'm gonna just go ahead and anchor it in the middle here. But for the lazy daisy, we're going to come up and then back through in the exact same spot, the base of this top petal. Perfect, I'm gonna pull it until you have just a tiny bit of a loop. And then what we're going to do is come up right under the bottom of that top petal. So find the uh, printed edge of the flower and your needle needs to come up either directly through it or right below so that you cover that printed line. From here, we're actually gonna take this little loop and you can make it bigger. I don't know why I made it so small. I'm gonna loop it around the thread, all six strands, not just a couple. All right, so from here, I'm gonna go ahead and pull that loop so that it's about the right looseness and then pull our needle up. Perfect. We've got a loop, we've got our thread. We're now going to come back down right as close to that same hole as we went through so that we can anchor our thread down. And you can make your loops as tight or as loose as you really want them to be. So you can pull at that little loop until it looks exactly how you want. And then we're going to start over, coming up in the middle. Dun, da, da, dun. And when I came back up, I made sure to go over the tail end of my thread so that that is now locked in place and it's not going to go anywhere. So now we are doing this loop to the left because we're gonna do the top two on both of these with the light purple. So come up, we're gonna go back down right next to it. Put it on. Perfect. Now go ahead and come up at the end of this leaf. And we do have that green thread from our leaf already there. So we're gonna come up just right next to it. That makes our loop perfect. Go back down. Trying to keep both of these stitches at the very, girls, that's enough, at the very top of my flower so that it doesn't kind of pull that loop to the side or make it look funky in any way. I'm gonna learn how to do this on camera. The videos that I watch of people doing all these intricate stitches on camera is just amazing to me. All right, and that's it. That is how you do the Lazy Daisy stitch. We're going to go ahead and do the purple now and the darker purple for the bottom three, and then we'll do the second flower, but that is all that it is. So there you go. Whether you're doing smaller versions or our larger pieces here, and I will show you on the green down in this portion, uh, it is the same stitch either way. So let's go ahead and get the purple, dark purple anchored on here. Um, but we'll finish our light purple first so that we don't have to worry about the two threads interfering with each other. So we're just gonna go ahead, cross over to the next flower.
All right, now there are a few places down at the bottom of the pattern where there are these little, right here, uh, straight stitch flowers. There was only one on the actual pattern. You can see it right here, indicated by just these straight lines. There's also on this little guy, a few of these straight stitches. Um, and it's just indicated by these little lines right here. Both of these are straight stitches. So because there's only one straight stitch flower, I wanted more of them. So I added two more purple ones. I may add a few blue ones or white ones. I'm not sure yet, but I, at the very least, am going to add another one right here to balance it out. I think at the end, like I said, when I'm adding all of the extra details, um, I want to add, especially these, I might do some more French knots around some of these little areas. I tend to like really busy designs. They're just pretty to me. So I am at the very least, while I have the purple thread going, adding another small straight stitch flower here because I prefer things in odd numbers to even, and there's only two purple flowers. I wanted to fill in a bit more of the space. So all you do for the straight stitch flowers, depending on how big of a flower it is, tiny like this one, or some of these larger ones here, is you're literally just going to do a straight stitch. So pull it through, dun dun dun, go back to the middle. We're doing five pointed flowers here is what they indicated with this bottom one, so five strands, whether they're all light purple or dark purple or a mixture of the two, come up through the middle each time, back through the middle, I suppose. Definitely better when I pay better attention. I tangled my thread there. There we go. And we'll do two more little stitches. Just trying to keep them as even to a star as possible and all the same length. There we go. So that is all of the top flowers. Really, that's all of the top done. So now we're going to go ahead and finish off this green. Uh, leaf. So I'm going to show you how to do the couching stitch, which is this little guy, this kind of running knotted stitch that we used in between all of the satin stitch for all of the white stitching for the green stems of this flower and this fern. So we'll use it first. We'll do it here on this line and then we will add our flowers on top. Down here for the fern, we'll actually do our uh, lazy daisy stitch for the leaves first, and then we'll add that couching stitch on top for the top of the stem, which is what we did here. You can do it either way. I don't know that it necessarily matters. I just, for this one, liked how it looked in the middle. And for this one, I wanted the flowers to stand out, so I did them on top. Either way, we're going to start by doing the lazy daisy stitches for these leaves. It is the exact same stitch we used for these little blue flowers. Um, but when I first started doing it, for some reason, the uh, larger loops really intimidated me. And I was super concerned about making them look good since a lot of these were tighter and these are obviously a looper, looper, that's not a word, a looser uh, stitch. So we're going to start like with the little flowers going through the base of our leaf twice. If you have more finger strength, you will have to actually take your thread or your needle aside and pull it through with pliers way less than me. I have such bad arthritis in my hands. All right, so now go ahead, come up at the very top 
I'll do that top stitch. This thread is so twisty. So again, we're going to come up right under or through or as close as we can get to that printed line there. Get our thread to lay nicely. Perfect. I'm gonna go ahead and pull it through and then start to tighten up that loop a little bit. Typically, I find it easier to tighten up the loop on the middle thread, but in this case, I'm just gonna pull it with the thread since we don't have it anchored in the back yet. Got that long new thread. Not nearly as problematic as those short purple ones I was just working with. But not as uh, easy on camera to show. So now hold that tight and we'll pull our needle through. Got it. Oh, I'm a champion. Finger champion. And make sure it gets tacked down nicely. Perfect. I'll anchor my thread by going over it to the base of the next leaf, which since this is printed, I can easily see it's going to be right here. Let's double check. Yep. That will anchor our thread here when we, the, the thread end. We go over it, da -da -da, get the whole loop, nice big toe stitches. Does anybody else call them toe stitches? That's what my mom always said. Don't make toe stitches, Elizabeth. I was a little girl learning how to sew for the first time. Just keep on doing all our leaf petals and then we'll come back and show you the couching stitch. So there are all of our leaves done. Now all we're going to do is kind of thread that thread back down to the base here. It doesn't have to be perfect. Technically we could have just come right back down, but I just kind of lead it under, help secure it, and it looks a little cleaner. When your fabric is thicker and less noticeable, then I don't worry about it. But even with this thicker material like up here, you can start to see threads through the design. So either way, we're going to start on our couching stitch, starting with the stem. So we're going to come all the way to the base and come up at the very base of our stitch. Dump that on. Perfect. Pull this bad boy all the way through as cleanly as possible. Now this thread is going to become the actual stem. It's going to come all the way up and be the straight portion of the stem. But we're going to be using two needles and two threads for this. So for now, all I'm gonna do with this guy is bring him up here and kind of tuck him in out of the way. Now we have a couple options, kind of just leave them like this. We can tighten it up, we can cut it shorter, whatever you wanna do. Um, for me, I'm gonna go ahead and cut it a little shorter so that there's, that way there's just less to get in the way and get potentially tangled up in our project. 
I am still fairly new to this, like I said, beginner level. So, you know, obviously, just it's not worth saving the longer thread when it is harder for me to handle. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up about a stitch length away with my new needle and my new thread. This one is also six strands, same as this, same weight, same color. I'm going to come up on one side of that thread, come all the way down. I'm going to then come down. I'm going to go back through that same, doesn't have to be the same exact hole, but you want it to be pretty close on the other side of the thread. This is going to tack that first thread down. So hold the first thread in place, pull the second one through. And that's what makes your little knots. So now we will continue doing that. Come up about a stitch length away. It does not matter if you come up on the left side or the right side or right in the middle all the way down. You, If you're consistent or not consistent as long as you're going up on one side and down on the other side, it doesn't doesn't really. All right, so now come down on the other side. And once again, just tack it in place. Now we're just going to keep doing this all the way to the other end. When we get to the other end, we will take that original needle and go down through to complete the entire look. And then we will move over to the other side. We will do the base here, same exact stitch on this, this little line for our pink flowers. That's it. Probably gonna be doing this green stitch all night. At least it's a pretty easy one. Honestly, most of them are easy once you get the hang of it. It's learning them that's harder. So we went all the way across. You can see that we put those knots about every stitch length. And then we came across and did the exact same thing here. And I've started to do the flowers, but A, I want to show you how to do these flowers and B, I wanna show you this. So when working on the stem first, Instead of putting a knot every stitch length, I made sure to leave the knots off in the areas where the flowers are going to go. Because having to put your needle through one of those knots to make a turkey loop uh, is just extra, extra thread that is unnecessary. So that is the couching stitch. I'm sure I'm saying that wrong. And you can do, you know, fewer knots or more knots depending on what you like. I've seen it both ways. I like more knots just for more interest, but it's completely personal preference. So now, before we get into the turkey loop stitch, which I think might be my favorite, I'm gonna finish off this little satin stitch flower. So satin stitch, of course, is just straight across one side to the other, the same way we did all of these little blue loops. But for this, we are going to use two different threads, a darker pink peach color, and then the lighter pink. So I've already got my thread ready to go. All we're going to do is we're going to start with the darker pink, 
going from the top edge to the bottom edge of all of this little cutout kind of designed area. Then we will come back with the lighter pink and go from the bottom up to meet it in the middle. Kind of like a long and short stitch, uh, but with a more defined area. So if you didn't have this jagged line in the middle, if this wasn't a more laid out kit, this is probably just long and short stitch with blending would almost look better, but you know, we're gonna do what the kit says because we're good like that. So I'm gonna come up and I kind of like to go from the top of these points to the top of the petal. This is a brand new thread, so it's really long. It's a lot easier when I'm not filming it. All right, let's try that. There we go. And now we will come back and just fill in above it. Then we'll go to the next point and fill in between. And you can do this with as many points along those printed lines as you like. The more uh, points you do, the more padded it will look. The less points, the smoother or flatter it will look. So it just depends on, on how you wanna stitch it really. So let's just go ahead and do this top pink portion. Main goal is just to cover all of the printed lines. So as long as we're doing that, it'll be great in the end. So now that we've got all the darker pink done, I'm gonna go in with our lighter pink. And all we're going to do is stitch up to that line, which is a lot harder to see now, but it's still there. Come up at the bottom. And it is darker today. It has been storming the last couple of days. So I did break out my, uh, my Cricut 360, which is my like task lamp hoping it doesn't cast bad shadows and that maybe you can see a little better. So we'll find out. I know it helps me see better. Uh, just go up to kind of meet those lines, blend them together. With long and short strokes, you kind of want to overlap to the point where they really blend together. Whereas with these, it's more of a padded effect kind of going up to those lines, which is satin stitch. I have, uh, I've done some leaves with long and short stitch, but I've never done this two-tone satin stitch before, so I'm not quite sure which I prefer or if I'm really doing it correctly, but I guess we'll find out. Just keep on going. It's part of the fun of the learning process is sometimes there's different ways to do the same stitch. And sometimes what the necessarily correct way to do the stitch isn't what you end up liking.
right, so we're gonna go off book a smidge here. That tail is really trying to be stuck as much as possible. And I'm gonna go right up here, just a smidge further than it calls for. There we go, blend it together. And then I'm gonna do the same on this side. I'm gonna come up in the middle actually. here. And there we go. All right, give me two seconds and I'll show you how to do the French knots, which is what we used for the middle of the flower. I left spot for two more up here at the top. We use the same French knots for the middle of this flower, which will be all turkey loop. And then you can see the very end of this little turkey loop flower has French knots for the little buds on the stem. So, okay, so for French knots, we're going to use our strand. This one is six thick, so it is three doubled over, which I do find easier to pull through than just threading six through. We're going to come up as you can see in our empty space, all the way up. Now we're gonna hold our thread and we're going to loop it. One, two, three times. This is a triple French knot, so see how that goes. Let me show you again, holding it up a little better. Hold it out from your flower. Go under, one, two, three. And now we're going to go down right to that same spot that we came up. If you're trying to come up in a specific spot, say one of these little dots over here, you'll come up kind of at the edge of the dot and then go through through down through the center. Now put your needle in and we're going to snug up this knot all the way to the base using that thread. And our fingernails just kind of push it down in that little space so that it's right where it should be. Now hold right here next to the thread and we're going to pull that French knot down. There we go. So one more, we have space, little tiny space, right next to it for our last French knot of the circle. You can also do French knots with one loop or two. I've never seen it done with four, five, six. I imagine you could, but they'd be, they'd be much bigger. So I'm gonna come up, I'm gonna go one, two, three. Okay. One, two, three. French knots, if you mess them up, are very hard to take out without having to completely start your thread over. So just be careful. Go back through that same spot. It's a very small spot. Now take that thread, I'm gonna snug it all the way down into that spot. And I find that often an easy way to help snug it into a spot is when you're pulling your needle down, kind of maneuver it into the space with the base of that needle. And then pull it down and pull it tight. And there we go. French knots mastered. It took me quite a while to figure out French knots. They're not hard, but for some reason, I thought they were supposed to look very different than they actually look. So go figure. All right, let me go ahead and finish this guy off. I'm just gonna...
loop him under. The French knots really hold themselves well. They're knots. You don't need to finish them off too heartily. But I do like to just secure my thread. We don't have anything come loose. Voila. So now I've got my four strands here. We've got dark purple, light purple, kind of magenta-y pink and green, which are the four colors we're using to do these turkey loop stitches. So I'm going to go ahead and get our darkest purple, which is the back uh, la first layer of our turkey stitch. And we'll do the turkey stitch. All right, so I've got my dark purple thread. I have pinned the rest of my threads back up. This is completely unnecessary if you are not clumsy and prone to tangling all your threads uh, or if you're finishing each piece, but especially when you're doing something like this, where you're doing multiple things all the way up, I want to be able to use these colors without having to start and stop them five, six, seven times. I just find that pinning them up with a little uh, pin there keeps them out of my way while still being attached and works well for me. If you have a better solution, let me know down below because a lot of the videos that I watch people just like finish with one thread and then put their needle up here and it's just like out and obviously they are more skilled than I am because a lot of those are thread paintings where they're doing like one or two stitches in each color and so maybe that's the difference maybe if I was just doing one or two stitches uh, I wouldn't get as tangled before moving on to the next color but so far this uh, has worked the best for me either way on to turkey loop so we're going to go on to I'm trying to remember if this or this was our next flower one's a flower and one's a leaf so consult our handy dandy flower guide this one on the left is a flower so we're going to do a turkey loop stitch flower right here now this is three colors so we're going to do three rows of turkey stoop stitch to turkey loop stitch the actual pattern i think calls for one loop and each color. You can see here, one loop in each color with a green base. And that gives you these kind of mm, wispier flowers. There's nothing wrong with that, but I liked uh, a video that I saw where they made these more kind of substantial flowers. So all I'm doing is instead of one loop in each color, I'm doing three or four of the dark purple and then one less in the light purple, one less in the pink. So this is three dark purple, two light purple, two pink. Three dark purple, two light purple, two pink. So we're gonna go ahead and do a three. Let's do... Let's do two. Let's do two, two, and two for this one. Okay. Make it a little bit smaller and then we'll do a bigger one. So we're going to come up to the very top of this uh, printed part of the design. And we're going to come through at the very left. Perfect. So for doing this many loops, we need room to put three rows of stitches and then the green. So you'll see what that means as we go, but we're going to start with just the dark purple two loops. So we're going to come up, we're going to go about a stitch length away, we're going to go back down. Now when we do this, we're going to leave a loop. The loop needs to be 
about as long as we want our flower to be. Whoops, pulled a little too hard. Plus the length of our green base. So if we did our, our stem or our flower petals this length, this green stem would actually be here. So the actual length needs to be like this far. Now you can see for this dark purple that it starts about here and then the green stem covers starting that dark purple stem and it goes up to cover the pink stem. So we're gonna do these about that far. I don't want it to go into this part. So we have two stitches that have come up and formed a loop. Now we are going to come up in the middle of those two stitches right to the left of the second loop. Perfect. Make sure our loop stays loopy. And now we're gonna go down right to the right of that loop. And this is a locking stitch. This is going to lock in that turkey loop so that it doesn't uh, come through, get pulled, get messed up. So now that loop is locked into place and it's not going anywhere. So now we have two options. We can either come up to the right of that locking stitch and start our next loop, or we can come up in the middle and start our loop. Depending on whether you want your stitches like the bottom, to sit next to each other or like the top to overlap is whether you're going to go beside or in between. I find that for most of these flowers in between with the overlapping kind of look gives a prettier effect. But depending on your space, depending on what you're going for, either one works. So now we're gonna go down to the right and we're gonna pull this stitch so that it matches our first stitch in height. We want those loops to be roughly the same height with the back, the back purple loop layer being the longest and then the middle and front layers being just a little shorter each time so that you can still see the back colors. If they were all at the exact same length, you wouldn't see the back colors as much. Perfect. Well, now we'll come up in the middle. Make sure that loop is still where we want it to be. And it's harder to see, but I, I like to put my thumbnail right over that stitch so it stays in place until it's locked in and I don't accidentally pull too hard and shorten my loop because uh, I've done that a bunch. So there are our two loops. Perfect. I'm actually going to come up in the middle here and I'm just going to lock in this middle loop on both sides and that helps it lay flatter if you put a locking stitch on the left and the right side of the loop. There we go. See how flatter, much flatter that looks. It's not twisting as much. So that is all we're doing for this back purple. Let's get the middle purple and I'll show you where to put the purple layer, the middle purple layer. So for our second layer, we're going to come up right in front of that first layer of stitches. And we're going to do our turkey loops for this layer, just slightly shorter. So that you can see them. There we go, it did not wanna go in front of the taller back layer. flat and now short
button it up. There we go. Let's lock that stitch in place. I'm not sure why this needle, one of the three needles that I have is harder to pull. I think the part where the thread goes through is thicker. I need to get some better needles so that they're easier to pull and less problematic. I've done three kits, so I have three embroidery needles. I have lots of sewing needles, but they are definitely too big. it in place. There we go. And now come up in between that little loop. And we're going to go over to the side and we're going to go right past the first back layer. It just all depends on whether you're trying to layer these on top, in which case you would do, like I said, three of the back, two of the middle, one of the front pyramid style, or you're trying to just oppose them. We'll go in a complete circle for this turkey loop. I want this particular one to be smaller, almost like a little tiny bud, but not a bud. The flowers, as they're going up this stalk, should get smaller and less dramatic. So that's how these kind of stalk flowers bloom, is you'll have the bigger showier flowers at the bottom all the way up to buds at the top. Lock in these middle stitches. Just find they lay flatter when you're doing a little series of these when you kind of lock it in as you go and not just one stitch at a time. Perfect. We can still see that back color and then the front color. So we go ahead and grab our hot pink and add those now. All right, so now we'll do the exact same thing. Coming up right in front of these with our bright pink. I'm doing two loops headed towards the side here. Now, the only other th way we could do these is we could go through with the dark purple and do our dark purple loops all the way up the stem and then come in with the medium purple and do the medium purple all the way up the stem. Being so new to this, I really like to do each flower individually as uh, I'm not 100% sure on the first flower, how the last one should look, and if it's gonna come out how I want it to look, or if I'm gonna have to pivot a little bit when they don't do what I want them to. It's a whole thing. So maybe as I get to be a better embroiderer and more confident, I will gain that ability. But until then, I'm just gonna keep doing my threads one at a time. And I think that that will work just fine. All right. I could really just do one of these hot pink loops, but I think I'm going to do two 
think it will be more balanced. A top layer, sometimes you have to go through quite a bit of layering to get your stitches right where you want them. So that is definitely a time when the jewelry players come in handy. Or bionic fingers. I have neither bionic fingers or regular fingers, so pliers for me. The Winter Soldier would be an amazing embroiderer. He could do needlework like nobody's business. Also, I've been watching an Avengers marathon as I work on this piece in the evenings, so yeah. There we go. So we've got all three layers and now we're gonna come back and do our green stem. All right, so now we're going to do our green base. Let's start off left and we want to cover all the base portions while making a cute little base of our flower. Snug as a bug in a rug. Keep working our way down until we reach the stem of the plant. And make sure that we do not get the loops of the other flowers at any point. Silicone fingers do help with the uh, normal pulling, but not through the layers. Definitely not through the layers and definitely not with the six strands. They also make it really hard to readjust my grip. They're too sticky. I mean, they're not sticky at all, but you know what I mean. Perfect, and then I am going to do, I'm not sure why this purple one is so stuck right there. But I'm gonna do one more tiny one to kind of connect everything at the bottom. Perfect. So now you can see, I want these to kind of go over that a little, that while our stitches were longer at the beginning, that green base, the higher up you go, the less that will come out. So we can have larger loops, we can have shorter loops, but if you make your loops too long, you can always 
shorten up a smidge with a bigger base. And so far, that is great. So we're gonna do one more of these turkey loop stitched flowers right here, going this way. These are leaves. And then we will add our French knots to the top. So give me a second to do this flower and then I will come back and show you the French knots. Ta-da! The fourth flower. And now we're going to do our French knots. So anywhere where there is a little a dot indicates a French knot. And then there are two lines that are supposed to be straight stitches. On this side, I ended up doing an extra French knot over that line because I liked it better. Um, we will see on this side if I do a French knot there or if I want to put a straight stitch with the green once I get to the end of the French knots. So. I'm going to start right here with the medium purple. You can do all of your knots the same color, or you can use a mixture of the three colors. That's completely up to you. The design shows all this middle color, I believe, but I liked a more um, tri-color effect. I don't know. I thought it was prettier. So let's go ahead. One, two, three. Go right back down, pull it tight, and pull it through. French knot one. I'm going to do another one of these on this side. One, two, three, go through the middle, come up on the side of the dot, down through the middle, and that typically covers the little dot really well. Three strands, you're gonna cover that little tiny dot pretty easily, whatever you do, but. Such a tiny dot. One, two, three. So if you were only doing a single strand uh, or a single twist French knot, you would just go around once and then you would go through. If you're doing twice, you're gonna go around twice and then go through three times and then go through. One, two, three. There we go. Go through the middle, pull tight, killing it. Dogs are excited too. Right, this is this is a mess. Gotta fix it before it ruins my whole French knot. Just a second. Now we'll grab our dark purple. Now let's do the hot pink because I know I want the hot pink to go at the top top. Right, and I don't worry about tying up my, my threads and needles for this. Um, the French knots, it's really just an up and down stitch, so you're not gonna get it tangled in your thread at the back the same way you do on the more intricate turkey loops.
Mm. The dogs are having way too much fun. Mm. All right, let's do the dark purple. So before we pull it back through, we can kind of see if we like that or not. I'm not sure about doing this one so close together. I like it enough. It doesn't have to be so worrisome. I'm gonna do one here. And I like to do some kind of crossing over the stem so they're on top a little bit and not just beside. And then I am going to do one straight stitch with the green. This flower I did leaves all the way up. This one I still need to come back and add leaves because for some reason they have them, they had them designed on this one and they didn't on this guy. So I guess if you like leaves, if you don't like leaves, but I want them on both, so I'm gonna add a few to this guy. So I can always add a straight stitch leaf to that one as well. We're just gonna do a one little green leaf. And then this guy's done. We'll finish him off in the back. And then we will move on to our turkey loop flower down here, which is supposed to be yellow, but I don't want to do yellow. So I'm going to use these same colors. I think that'll be really pretty. And then when I add my other stitches to these um, ferny kind of leaves, I'm going to use these same pink colors, but that will be in the second video. I have some plans. I've been trying to decide which stitches I want to try. And I want to try some hollyhocks for these, some padded leaf uh, heart shaped leaves over in here on the outside, and then some little uh, more textury leaves with these colors. So I don't know. This is looking really cute for the kit, but I want it to be very full. So we're going to fill in more of this outside portion. For now, let me go ahead and finish off these leaves and then we'll start on our turkey loop flower down here. All right, so we're gonna start on our turkey loop flower. We're going to do two rings of the turkey stitches 
and then fill it in with more French knots. Now, again, the design calls for these two yellow flowers, petals, whatever you want to call them. I just don't want to do yellow. I honestly don't quite understand the colors they've picked for this. They're all over the board. We've got like these pinkish corals with the purple and the blue and then these brighter pinks like sea foams with the greens. None of them are bad, but they're not what I would have picked to go together. So as I add more stitches and I add more of these colors, I think it will be better because right now it's like there's only this color in this spot. I'm going to use these colors to do the hollyhocks and pulling it some other places I think will help balance it. So I'm going to skip the yellow because I feel like I don't want to add another new color. And I'm going to do at the very least my back ring with the dark purple. And then I'm thinking the inside ring with the light purple. And then the middle, either this darker rose or the magenta, depending on how these two flowers look next to each other. But I think it'll be good. So regardless, we're gonna start with what's left of our purple thread from the long flowers. We don't have much, but we'll use it up and it should be able to do quite a few turkey loops. So we're gonna come up right outside that uh, outside ring, okay? Not on it, because then that will make doing the inside loop harder, but right outside of it. I'm gonna come down next to it. Perfect. And now we're going to decide right here, right now, how long these loops are gonna be, because that is always the first question. I'm just trying to shorten up that tail a little bit. That'll work. All right, so we want this outside loop. To be far enough over. Let it think almost touches or just barely overlaps the blue. Yeah. Perfect. Now we're going to lock that in place, but I somehow have released my thread from the needle. So two seconds. This is the problem with short threads. All right, 12 years later, we're all set. So I'm gonna hold this down. I'm going to come up and do a little locking stitch. Lock in this first loop. I'm going to come back and I'm going to go ahead and lock in the first loop as well since I didn't uh, secure my thread in the back and that will secure the tail end. Perfect. Now we have one loop locked in place. So we're going to just go ahead and go around the entire circle and come up in between. Gonna make this loop the same length as his first brother friend, sister friend, whatever you want to call him. The first loop. Don't lose your needle. Don't lose your needle. Lock her down. Oops. One day I'll be a master. Until then, I can fix most mistakes. All right, that's better. All right, lock it down. And we're just gonna go around the entire circle like this. 
And then we will come back with that medium purple and we will do another smaller circle directly in front of this covering that next set of lines. Then we will do French knots in the middle. There you go. And our last flower will be complete. And technically this entire kit will be finished. And we could move on to another project, but I want to do more things. Cause I can't ever leave well enough alone. This will be much easier once I have a longer thread, actually. <laughs> but I'm trying not to be wasteful. I also thought a shorter thread might be easier on camera, but I was wrong. All right, I will be back in a minute. And I will show you the end of the dark purple loop and the start of the middle loop, okay? All right, one full circle of turkey loop stitches. I definitely like that darker color there instead of the yellow. And I do think it's not quite the same purple as this, but it's just helping pull a lot of those purples together. So I think once I add this corally peach color, a few other places, it, it will all start to tie together. But doing the second turkey loop stitch in the middle and the French knots, is our last step to finishing this hoop and it will be all done from there you can hop over i will link when it's done it will probably be a while because this took maybe a week two weeks uh to complete and it had guides so you know adding new stitches that i'm learning and not having guides i'm sure it will take a while but whenever I have completed this hoop to the best of my abilities, I will upload a second video with those new stitches and you can see. But for today, we are going to finish this stitch, this flower, and this hoop will be completed according to the pattern. So let's get going because you're rapidly losing daylight. And while my, uh, my little task lamp here works perfectly for a lot of things. It's not as good for filming the whole scene. So you're going to use this medium purple here. I think that'll be pretty. And we're just gonna go right under the first layer. Ooh, okay, we're gonna need a better needle. The first one pulled much easier. So, let's go ahead and see. I think it'll probably be best just a little bit. Oh, you weren't even looking just a little bit shorter than the first layer. So just a smidge shorter, not a lot. And we will just work our way all the way around that circle, making slightly shorter turkey loops. I wonder why it's called turkey loop. Yeah, we're gonna get a better needle. Uh, two of the three needles that I have are fairly decent and one is harder to pull. So I'm guessing this is the harder to pull one. Now the other thing you can do with turkey loop that I've not had a pattern for or the need to try is you can always cut all these loops, which I know a lot of people do for uh, fuzzy flowers, like uh, 
dandelions. You could make a, a puff ball, a whole flower of loops, and then cut them all so they're poofy. Or um, bumblebees. Works really well for fuzzy little animals. So maybe I'll have to pick a pattern with some fuzzy tur turkey loop in the future. I mean, I could add a bee to this one. I do have lots of yellow, yellow thread I'm not using. I could add a cute little bee, but I don't know that, I don't know that I want a pink or a yellow bee. If the whole goal was to not add more colors, adding a yellow bee would defeat that. All right, we're going to continue all the way around and do the French knots since y'all know what that looks like. I am not trying to show you this entire pattern second by second or I'd be filming all day because it takes me so long. I wonder if people get faster as they get better or if it's probably to some extent but it's, I would imagine just a very time consuming hobby with the uh, different stitches. All right, let's go. All done. So now I'm going to move on to adding those extra stitches. And I will do a whole other video on that since this video has already gotten so long. But just going off the pattern, this is where we ended up. I think it turned out pretty good. I do like the purple flower better than the yellow one in the original design. And I liked adding extra of these turkey loops to make these flowers fuller. Other than that, though, I followed the design fairly closely. I also didn't add the little yellow centers to these purple flowers. I still haven't decided I may do that or I may add a white center. I just don't really want to add any more yellow. So either way, I really liked it and it was really fun to learn some of these more intricate stitches. I also have learned that I prefer the satin stitches or um, just a a padded, more full look for leaves than this kind of more skeleton outline kind of look. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just not my preference. If I was redoing this, I would probably uh, use my own stitches there instead of what they recommended. But I'm not going to go back and change it. I'll probably just add some other leaves to uh, the design as I add more stitches. So hope you liked this video. If you were working on this kit or a similar kit, I hope it was helpful and I will see y'all in the next video. Bye.